Actually, in our Bangkok event in December, I had two guys coming up to me and said like, Aki, we owe you a commission. I'm like, for what? It's like, well, actually, we didn't tell you, but two years ago, we met at your event and we just both discussed with each other that we wanted to give you a percentage because without you, we wouldn't have met each other. And they randomly just gave me a commission. I was like, damn, that's crazy. The fastest way to provide value is knowledge or network. It's not only money. You can have a million dollar investments, but if you don't know what to do with the million dollars, what's a million dollars worth? Take your character everywhere you go. If you have a shit mindset, you take it anywhere you go. But if you have a great mindset, you take that everywhere you go too. So if you're a person of value, it doesn't matter where you, which city you live in, people will want to connect with you because you're a person of value. I love it. That's a mindset you gotta have. It's always bring, providing value for your people in your network. I want to be in a position where opportunities come towards me instead of me searching for the opportunity. When you're starting, you need to find what you're good at. I didn't know what I wanted to do. That's why you start doing many different things. Welcome to another edition of the LFG Let's Fucking Go show. Today, we're in a special location. We are in Dubai. We're at the World Soul is building the back of us right now. And I'm here with a good friend of mine, someone that I love a lot, a very unique person in our industry, Aki Hamam. What's up, my man? You Great good? to have you on the show, man. Really You're good right. to have you thank on the show. You, thank you, thank you. So Aki, Aki does a lot of stuff. He is the founder of Affiliate Business Club, their premier group of people who are in e-com affiliates in the space looking to take shit to the next level. Great network community. I met you there, actually. I met you there three years ago here in Dubai. Correct. You know, yes. I, I had a booth there. I got yep. a lot of good business there. Great community. You're doing other stuff. You, you're, you're cleaning up the Nile River. Correct. Some amazing charity work that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Nonprofit, right? Doing good stuff. We're talking about that. And you're also an angel investor. So let's go, Aki, man. Let's tell everybody what you do. <laughs> How'd you got into business, man? Thank you, bro. Love yeah. the introduction. Great, <laughs> great. Yeah, so we did meet at one of my events through Amir. Yeah. Um, so Shout out Amir McKay. Hope you're doing good. Thanks, <laughs> Amir, for making the connections yeah. for sure. Um, so yeah, ABC really started off with the goal to lay down better connections for people. Uh, I felt as an affiliate back in the days, for me, I was lacking uh, one event organizer that was just organizing the same kind of concept around all the shows. So I remember I was going to New York once to the affiliate summit in New York, and I just didn't meet enough people, in my opinion. It's massive. You get lost easily there. It's yeah. super lost. Yeah. It's a massive city. Yeah. Yeah. It's a massive show. Yeah. Uh, and then I heard, I heard all these people, they were invited to private events like ClickBank or whatever. ClickBank's been here for ages, right? And I wasn't working with ClickBank bank, bank back in the day, so I wasn't invited to these events. So I remember after the show, I didn't know where to go. And I was like, okay, but there should be something where if I have this, other people have the same feeling. I, they, it's impossible that I'm the only 100%. one that doesn't know where to go after a show. Uh, so yeah, actually seven years ago, came up with the idea, you know what, let's create a concept where people, the, the right people can all connect and know where to go everywhere they go. Whether it be Affiliate Summit East, West, or Affiliate World, or even the smaller shows like in e-com or legion or right, iGaming or, or dating. Um, I think the, the, we've done it perfectly in the sense of getting the right people on board. And now we've grown to, uh, yeah, we've done more than 150 events for sure. And in seven years, 40 countries um, doing meetups, masterminds, dinners, parties, uh, soon our own show, finally, after all these years. So. The goal is to grow it bigger and to lay down better connections for the people. I love it. And I can tell you that for a fact that it's not only the event, you also throw after parties and, and, right. and great yeah. parties as well. And, and I'm always a big, I'm always someone that says that it doesn't just happen at the events. A lot of the, my best business has happened at, at the after parties. So let, let's talk about that. Like what are some success stories you've seen, whether it was at your event or at the after parties or where like two people got together or a series of people got together and something beautiful came out of it. Got any examples of that? Yeah, for sure. Like I remember uh, Alex Miko, a very good buddy of mine. Yeah. Um, he, he's doing tens of millions a year uh, during with YouTube and VSL. Um, I, I remember him coming to our Barcelona event five, six years ago, and he was making his first ten thousands. And he even said like, bro, back in the days, I met some people at your event and 
look at me now, like in a good way, not like in a cocker. You know how he is. He's exactly. the most awesome, he's very humble. chill guy, humble yeah. guy. And I'm like, well, that's crazy. Like I met a few people at your event. And actually in our Bangkok event uh, in December, I had two guys coming up to me and said like, Aki, we owe you a commission. I'm like, for what? It's like, well, actually we didn't tell you, but two years ago we met at your event and we just both discussed with each other that we wanted to give you a percentage because be without you, we wouldn't have met each other. Wow. And they randomly just gave me a commission. I was like, damn, that's crazy. And, and you know, I make money on commissions and connecting people, you know? So for me, it's like, they, they know my, my business is like connecting people. And without me asking, I think like you should always give regardless. So the more you give or the more you provide in general, the more you get back. And I've noticed that the more I was focusing on trying to make a buck or a percentage of introducing people with each other, the less I would make. But the more I would just organize, I do the CEO entrepreneurs dinners all around the world. We did one in Bali and Bangkok. Now we're doing one in a couple of days here. Uh, the more I, I connect the right people with each other and be like, hey guys, just come and connect with each other. The more they're like, oh man, thank you. Without, without this, I wouldn't have met this pe these people. And sometimes we charge premium prices like $500 or, or $1,000 for a dinner, which is for dinner. It's, yeah, it's, well, yeah. I think it's, it's a reasonable price, but I think so too. Okay. Some people say like, well, you charge so much. Like, bro, you get to, you get to eat at the right spots. Exactly. Uh, you get to meet the right people and you get to network with high level individuals, like high network individuals. And I think this is the most important thing where I'd, I'd pay one grand to join a dinner if I know I'm going to meet the right people. Um, so in that sense, we're always trying to provide like some, something of value. And, and in that sense, I always try to be a personal value as well for the people I meet along the way. Like, how can I, yeah, I know I'm a nice person, but how can I add value to someone's life or, or, or business? Yeah. And in that sense, ABC is, is the perfect, uh, in my opinion, a perfect example where I've grown my network like crazy just by being the organizer. Everybody knows you internationally. I'll tell you that for sure. And, yeah. and, but I've worked hard for it, you know, and, and, and in that sense, We've gone through a lot of struggles. I've gone through personal struggles like every entrepreneur. Uh, ABC has had a very big hit during COVID, obviously. Wow. Um, going from here to zero revenue almost. Um, and after two years, you don't know where you stand with the company. Are you still what people think? Like we used to be always like premium. Yep. After two years of no events, do people still think you're premium? And that's actually when we met, like remember? That's, the, 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 that's when it was restarting again. The restarting again. Yeah. Um, and, and now we're always trying to, to be the best, the best possible way for ourselves. Not even, always, I always think like uh, being the best in the market is, is perception because a lot of people, they love what they're used to. They don't really necessarily love the best, mm -hmm. right? If, if a super, super simple example, I'm Dutch, right? I love Dutch cheese, man. Dutch mm -hmm. cheese is the best. If, if, but I, I'm also Egyptian. I don't like the Egyptian cheese, but all my people in Egypt, they love Egyptian cheese. And yeah. they also love Dutch cheese, but I don't, I, I like what I'm used to. Correct. A, and not necessarily, and they, even though Dutch cheese is better than Egyptian cheese, mm -hmm. they love what they're used to as well. So, and I think it's that in, in this as well, you're not necessarily always going for the best. You're going for what you're used to, what brings you stable, good money. Um, because the best might not always be the best option, even though people are saying it's the best. So in that sense, yeah, we're trying to be our best selves and provide the best possible way. And that's, you always need to change. And, and we were just talking about this morning, like loss change, people change, perception change, mm -hmm. industry changes, it moves so fast. So in that sense, how can you always, how can you provide the best value? Absolutely. And, and this is an ongoing change. Yeah. And, and I, I like what you said about Really, we're talking about is getting outside your comfort zone, right? And to, in order to grow as a person, as an entrepreneur, you got to do new things. I, I, I came, to, I never been to Dubai or a lot of people I think in America are scared to go to some of these international shows. I'm going to go to Dubai. What's it going to be like there? Whatever. But yeah. you got to go step outside your comfort zone and knowing someone like you who you've lived here, you have a lot of connections here. You've been all over the world. I mean, you right. live in Amsterdam. And if I need something, I was going to ask you this question earlier. We talked about, I don't know, six or seven months ago, or maybe a year ago about investing in Bali. Right. right. So I asked you today, how is you like, listen, I love Bali, but it's become oversaturated. I don't recommend that now, but that's the kind of stuff the knowledge that yeah. from an expert like you, you can help prevent someone like me or someone in your network from 
fallen victims, something like that. So do you have any examples of, I guess, in your network where maybe you guys have saved people a lot of money, prevented people from making some stupid decisions? I would say, like, because we work with other companies oh. in the industry, you know the good and the bad, obviously. There's always good and bad people in every industry. Uh, uh, and And I always try to work or see what someone's intention is. So based on what someone's intention is, I can recommend things. It's one of the reasons why I, I co-founded an asset management company. That uh, 30D? 30D Capital. So the asset management company was also something I was lacking personally. Where do I invest money outside crypto? Like, and our industry is very n- normal to invest in crypto, right? Absolutely. A lot of people own quite some crypto. It's very accessible. We know how to work with MetaMask or all these other tools and how airdrops work or something. But if you talk to a, a noob or someone who doesn't know crypto, they don't know how to install MetaMask. Yeah, it could be intimidating. To, yeah, it could be like, oh, damn, MetaMask, what is it? Plug in. They don't know how to join an airdrop. But, okay, the crypto part was pretty easy. Then we're like, okay, what if I want to invest in stocks and crypto? That's what I said. Uh, stocks and IPOs, I mean, outside crypto. But where do we start? And, and now I think with the people that I know, they all, a lot of people ask me normally, hey, uh, you know, a lot of people make money with e or one thing really well, but they don't know how to diversify exactly. their investments. Yeah. And this is really something where we wanted to create and provide value. Like, okay, we're a trusted source. I'm a trusted source. I know I'm a person of value because I've helped people. People know me. I wouldn't vanish with the money. The last thing I would do is vanish. I'm a religious guy as yeah. well. Like I believe but in your karma. business depends on your reputation. Exactly. At the end of the day. And and yeah. you can start a new business, but not a new name. Exactly. Like a per- you could t- you potentially, but yeah. If you, you, I always say like you take your character everywhere you go. So if you have a shit mindset, you take that anywhere you go. But if you have a great mindset, you take that everywhere you go too. So if you're a person of value, it doesn't matter where you, which city you live in, people will want to connect with you because you're a person of value. Um, in that sense, I've always tried to help people with my pers- also on, uh, like, uh, honest personal opinion of what they should do. But I'm always asking, like we talked about, I love Bali. I think it's still a great investment, but it's becoming oversaturated. But that's my personal view. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to recommend you something just to make a quick buck and connect you maybe with someone. And yeah, okay. I'll make my commission 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand or whatever on something. But if, if your investment goes bad or down or you're not happy in one or two years, what did I really gain? Because money is made everywhere, but trust is not made anywhere. Exactly. So in that sense, I'd rather be like open and honest, be like, hey, guys, I, I, I wouldn't do it. But with the asset management company, I've invested in all of these things myself, so I can recommend because I've done it myself. So if someone comes up to me and talks about being an angel investor or I, I've been an angel investor, like how, do, how is it to invest in something? I can tell from personal experience. Yeah. Uh, same with IPOs, same with crypto, same with stocks. Now that I'm involved in it, it's way easier because I'm not saying something I don't know about. And I don't want to recommend some, something to someone which I have no clue talking about. So for me, it's like once you really like walk the talk, then it's like, okay, you can recommend something to someone. Well, I just don't, I don't like to talk to talk and then be like, huh? Yeah, you should do it, but I haven't done it myself. Yeah. And a lot of people do yeah. because they want to make a quick buck. I love it. That's the mindset you got to have is always creating, providing value for your, the people in your network. So I think at the end of the day, what you build is a community. You build this community of high level people. And I think really what you do is you help collapse time frames. If you know, there's been times where I got involved in paper call and like, hey, I got this guy in paper call, connect. You, know, you, you were able to talk to me really fast and you're able to identify, hey, this is what I need. This is what I have a guy that can help you out. And that's what you're doing. It's collapsing time frames at the end of the day, right? Would you say that? Yeah, I, yeah. I think it really also, uh, it goes back to, to value. Like mm. when you become a, a trusted person, you know, when I introduce you to someone, it, it's a person of value. Because you know, I wouldn't introduce you to someone who's a bullshitter. Sure. And the other person also knows. So I think the more you become a person of value, uh, and that's in everything. That, that's a person of value to any business, to the marketplace, to your family also, to your friends. Um, I think in general, you should always try to provide everyone around you in the past, best possible way. And, and once you've created that, people come to you and ask you for things. And then now I'm in a position where I can choose what to work with. Before, 
you you can't because you still need to build up your reputation. Absolutely. And it's just like when you don't have much money. Um, actually, we have this theory in our company where we call it the headache per euro theory. And it's like a headache for what? The headache per euro. Okay. Per so euro, euro dollar made or something. Okay. So when you start a company, you have a lot of headache, right? But you don't make much money. But th as soon as you get much money, more money, you want less headache and you're paying to, right. to have less headache, right? Wow. For example, ABC, I, I have a perfect CEO, Natalia. She's, she's awesome. She's amazing. She creates way less headache for me, like, but she's making good money and, and ABC is making money. So. At one moment, there's always someone who can do the job better than you. But what do you want yourself in return? It's peace of mind, right? Yeah. Every, every entrepreneur wants peace of mind. Absolutely. We don't always have it, but everyone wants <laughs> it, right? We're always like stressed yeah. out in something. But at, at that moment, it's like, okay, you're willing to pay your hire people to do their job for you and you have less headache. So that's the headache per euro, let's say. Right. But it's also when you make more money, you usually get more headache because there's more, that, like Biggie said, more money, more problems. Absolutely. You know? Or Will Smith or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, in that sense, how do you create something where you get less headache? Correct. And I think the more you become a person of value, the more you're in a position to create less headache for you. Because now it's like, you know how we make money. It's like, I connect people with each other. Many things I could do, I could start a effort in that work. I could start something, uh, a business of people I connect with, but I, I'm okay with making less money and having almost no headache and make my commission. Because that's how I can be part of several companies, uh, connect people with more, with more with each other and take my cut and also provide again, more value. Because in that sense, the fastest way to provide value is knowledge or network. It's not only money. Uh, we, you can, you can have a million dollar investments, but if you don't know what to do with the million dollars, what's the million dollars worth, but you can have half of the investments, have the right people on board, have the right consultants, have the right network involved and make 5 million. Absolutely. So I try to add value as fast as possible with knowledge and with my network. I can be like, Hey, David, I can two X or four X your revenue, but just talk to these two people. And it's a simple introduction, but again, you have to become a person of value first to be able to do these introductions. Yeah. And it takes time too, right? That's the other thing. How long have you been doing this for? Over a decade, right? 10, 15 years? ABC, seven years. Uh, I've been in the affiliate marketing industry 13 years now, almost wow. 30, 14 years. Yeah, it's crazy. I think this is like dog years, bro. Yeah. Like every year is like seven years, right? <laughs> I've been, I've been doing, I've been in call centers <laughs> over 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. Shit, I'd be 140 years <laughs> at that point. But I, I've been in digital markets since 2015, right? Yeah. But man, I think like every year is like dog years, right? So some, like you're a veteran, obviously, in the space. I feel like yeah. sometimes I talk right. to young, young kids, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, damn, man, I've been in space for 13 years. Bro, those young years. kids will humble you, right? Know, like, what the fuck? And they're like, like they're, they're crushing dude, it. Yeah. <laughs> like, Alex, how old, I don't even know how old he is. He Alex must be in his late uh, 20s, right? Yeah, he's like 25, 26. Yeah, some guy. He's like, he's fucking that. He's killing yeah, He's yeah. making 20, 30 a year or yeah. whatever. Awesome, dude. Humble us, you know. Yeah, he drives that car, but yeah, it's fine, you know, but yeah. he's the most chill guy ever. I met some other e-com guys, 24, 22, TikTok guys. And I was speaking to a guy even last year in Barcelona. He's like, yeah, I made like 7 million last year. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. You're 21, dude, making 7 million. But they're humble as hell, right? Yes. That's what I like about the industry. There's not really a lot of what we call like douchebags or jerk balls. No one's like, you know, you know, they're doing well, but they're not flexing and they're, and they're willing to share. Correct. Yeah, it's like what you're talking about. And I guess if they're not, then they're, they're going to hurt them. They're make short term money. They make, they won't make the long term money. But then I find a lot of guys like that, that are making that kind of money. They don't know what to do next. Or there's, there's, I'm going to be speaking in a couple of days about new changes to lead gen, right? right? That's yeah. affecting my business, affecting other people. I don't know if they're aware of that shit. So let, let's talk about that too, because I'm sure, especially you, especially being in Dubai and being, being in, in Europe and in the Middle East, like you, you're seeing people with making a lot of money really, really fast. Like, what's your advice? So if you're someone like that that just got in the industry and you're killing an e com or a legion, what's your advice to someone like that so you can protect your money? Because it's easy to fucking lose money. There's so much yeah. shit to lose money yeah. on. You know that, right? I, I know did. that too. Yeah. Trading, yeah. wrong investments, wrong, <laughs> wrong advice, uh, uh, wrong people, most important. <laughs> I think to, lose, to lose money quick. I'm a big fan in, in investing in, in different concepts. I am different we, concepts or con uh, concepts? Oh, okay. concepts. concepts, yeah. For example, I, I have. A friend of mine, super successful real estate guy in Amsterdam. Mm. He's making millions and he, but he's only doing real estate. 
he has many different properties, but what if like, the laws are changing now? Yeah. So you, you can say like, I have different sources of income because he thinks he has different properties. He's like, yeah, I have many different sources, but actually you have one source of income, which is real estate. You can have several objects, but it's still one, one source of income. One poor thing, yeah. And you're, st you're stuck to one, one law, which is Holland's. So if, if not like now, Holland, the, 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 the laws are changing, he's fucked. He's paying more tax, the laws is changing with more tax. Uh, he has a maximum of, of, rev, of, of, uh, of rent he can ask because of the apartments that he has. So I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you invest in, in different concepts, different industries, different countries, most important, and uh, different continents, that's when you spread your whole risk. Because I can make money in Bali, in Egypt, Saudi, Dubai, uh, Europe. In general, I see Europe as one thing, even though, let's say, Spain or, or France or Holland, they're kind of like the same. There's opportunities there. Or like Portugal used to be really hot with, with real estate. It's also changing. But that's because the EU, at the end, is still controlling yep. as, as a worldwide, well, a bigger organization, I mean. So for me, the reason why I'm heavily involved or spending more time in Arab countries, well, I'm, I'm Arab, so I'm... I'm I'm Egyptian. I speak the language. I understand the Arab way of thinking. Uh, the Saudis, the Dubai uh, people, the Emiratis, Egyptian people, obviously, like I'm based in Egypt now. And there's a lot of opportunity for, I'm not even talking like people like me, but the generation like us that have cash, that made cash online, that made money, euros and dollars, and invested in a different country. Because in Egypt, there is a shortage of foreign cash. Huge opportunity. You can buy an apartment for 100K, flip it because there's a shortage of foreign cash. You pay with foreign cash. Uh, you get a discount because you're paying foreign cash. Wow. Um, you can start a business in Egypt for 50 to 100 grand, making you 1K a month. In Europe, it's impossible. Because it's, for me, when I was younger, I always thought I need to make a million with one big hit, right? Everyone thinks, yeah. well, <laughs> how do I make my first million? Every young guy, I thought, no, man, I, I need to make one big hit and I'm there, yeah. right? But to become successful is not to make one big hit because you'll just be like a one day fly. And I know guys that made money with a lot of crypto. They don't know how to invest. They're not a person of value. They're not an entrepreneur. They, know, they don't know how to diversify. Mm -hmm. So you make good money and now they lost. They're, they might have okay money now, but if you don't know how to invest in different industries, it's a very fast way of losing money quick. Yeah. For me, is to connect at that many different places. It brings so much more opportunity because now people are like, hey, Aki, I have an amazing opportunity. Can you invest in this in startups, for example? But even real estate project, there is a guy who came, he invited me to, uh, we're talking about good real estate project, now Oman, like closer to down south here in Dubai and, 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 and Saudi. Very interesting because you can buy apartments for between 200 and 500K, making you 10, 12% a year. Wow. Whereas Holland is five percent, I think now. I don't, I don't know the exact number, but probably like this. Bali is still good, but yeah, you know my view about Bali. But then I'm like, people come to you because they see your personal value. They know that you know a lot of people, yeah. so they know you can raise capital. And that's the position I want to be in. I want to be in a position where opportunities come towards me instead of me searching for the opportunity. But when you, when you're starting, you need to find what you're good at. I didn't know what I wanted to do. That's why you, you, you start doing many different things. Oh, maybe I should study. Maybe I should work for a company. Maybe I should, oh, I have an idea. I should start this. No, I have another idea. I start this. We all, we've all been there. Every entrepreneur has tried 50 things, let's yeah. say. But once you grow older, you know what you're really good at. And for me, that's networking and laying down connections. And if someone needs something, they know I can provide very fast. Yeah. And that's what I want to be known for. And that's what I want to keep doing for the rest of my life because everyone really talks about where do you see yourself in five years but because i i trust myself and my own characters your characteristics and and i know my qualities i don't work a day in my life man it's fun for you it, it's fun <laughs> and and without this it's like once you like for example why do people fuck over other people it's greed or ego or, or what I believe, it's they're unsure of what they can gain in their future. Mm. So uncertainty. What, uncertainty. Because yeah. when you're afraid of the future and you don't know if you're going to make money next, next month, next year, 
and you 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 grab whatever you can grab. Yeah. And let's say with with food, if people in, 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 in poorer nations, if if you give them all the food, they'll eat as much as they can because they don't know how much they will eat in the next couple of days. Exactly. But that's the same thing with business and money. So when when you fuck someone over, I can swear, right? Let's, let's yeah, fucking fuck, go show. Yeah, so we're, let's, let's fucking go. Let's, let's fucking go. go. Yeah. No, but, <laughs> but when you fuck someone over, you do it for yeah, from out of greed, yeah. uncertainty, or your ego. Yeah. But for me, I'm so certain about the future that things somehow, some way or the other will be fine, that I trust every process along the way. It's, I'm a firm believer of God. I know God has, has, if you're a good person and you do good for the world, things will align and things will, bad things will happen for you to not do what, what you thought you had to do. And that's the same thing right, like now, like the industry, everything's changing, you're talking about it. A lot of people will think, oh shit, that's bad. But the people have opportunity or that, that are seeking opportunity, they'll change like this. They're like, okay, this is changing. I can cry, but I can also adapt. Absolutely. And adapting is the only way of being certain about the future. Because you can be, let's say our parents, they're used to old way of working, like the work hard, work for your boss or whatever. But that's their, that's their knowledge, right? They're not used to adapting as fast to the marketplace as we do. And our yeah. industry is changing so fast, man. It does. I think what you said was really huge about certainty, right? And I think that the one thing that's certain about the affiliate marketing space and online marketing is that there's always change, right? And so you got to be able to adapt to that change. And by knowing people like you, who I, I feel like you're a, you're like a power, a power broker. You're a power networker you, at bro. the end of the day. Yeah. You really are. I understand it. And in and, and the fast growing, this this here was freaking desert 15 years ago. Now we're, I was at Palm Island or, or is it Palm? Uh, Palm's I was there uh, yesterday, right? That was on water like 15, 20 years ago. Now it's like beautiful, a real, crazy real estate, right? right so there, yeah. the point is that if, you're, if your proximity is key, you're, you're here located where there's so much money coming towards, right? So you feel what's going on. Mm -hmm. So someone like me that lives in America, like right now I'm in Florida, there's a lot of money flowing towards Florida, but to have a connection like you here, if I want to invest one day here, I'm like, hey, Aki, what do you think about that? You're going to collapse time frames for me. And collapsing time frames is huge because I'm busy as fuck. I'm you know, working. I'm working, I'm on the, with my family on the weekends. I don't have the time to do that shit. So that's why that's the value with someone like you is that you can help reduce the uncertainty. And I know for certain, like, hey, Aki's a good guy. He's connected. He's not going to fuck me over. It's going to help accelerate time frames, collapse time frames for me and create win-wins, man, at the end of the day. I think that's really the value. I think that's the most important thing, if, if especially for entrepreneurs that, that made good money, yeah. like you, like you're successful with your company. Uh, you know a lot of people and, and you want to, most entrepreneurs, they don't want to do too many things, right? Like there's no entrepreneur that's, that, that runs 10 companies full time. Like even Elon has four companies yeah. or something, right? Yeah. And he's not managing all four companies, even though he's CEO of some. Um, but if, if someone comes with an opportunity towards, let's say you or even Elon, you will only go to a trusted person who you will only invest your money or spend time with someone if you know, okay, I trust this person or it came to a trusted person. And I think this is the main reason or it's it's why I do what I do. I I want to become the the bridge between the West and the Arab worlds. Hence why I was living in Dubai, uh, spending more time in Saudi, living in Egypt now. Um, and, and for people like you and many other people in the industry, people always want to invest in something because it's stupid not to. You're, the dollar is becoming less worth. The euro. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen yet, but everyone. It's a known fact that that the dollar is becoming worth less. They're printing trillions of dollars. They're sending billions in aids to foreign countries um, and not fixing their own country, which in my opinion, well, you've got bigger fish to fry than, yeah. than sending aids, you know? Yeah. Um, but for entrepreneurs like us, which where we've worked hard to build where we are and to have what we have, you always want to invest, I said, like with trusted people. Absolutely. I love it, man. And let's talk about, you made me think too, we're talking about uncertainty and certainty. If someone's a good media buyer, right? And they know how to generate leads or they know how to get people to click on ads for e-com. They're making a lot of money doing that. That's their lane. That's what they're really good at. You're right. a good networker. This is your lane. But it's important to surround yourself with people that compliment you. And let's say you'd like to be behind the screen 
you know, have a small media team or big, whatever the hell it is you're growing, you got to connect. You have to have other people that as part of your network that are good networkers or are good with money. That's how you're going to grow ultimately. Because at the end of the day, it's fun to generate leads and to do what you're doing, but you're not going to get to the next level if you're just doing that for the rest of your life. And that's part of stepping outside your comfort zone, right? You agree. And what would you say is, you have any examples of people like that? Then maybe they start off, I know we talked about Alex, but they start off as a, maybe a one person affiliate buyer, affiliate uh, media buyer or e-com person. And now they're like, they're blowing up because they, they follow those steps. So they follow that process. Yeah, one of my old media buyers, uh, my previous company, uh, I, he's super low key, but he, he actually doesn't like to go to shows, for example. Interesting. But he likes to go to the smaller events around the shows. More intimate ones. Ben more intimate. Like the, yeah, I, I, I know he's, he's making seven figures a month easily. Wow. Like easy. And I, I always told him, but you have to go to shows because we used to run a media buying company together 10 years ago. And he didn't like it. I said, but you have to never because you get better deals when people meet the face behind the crazy trust. Yes. I always can get a better deal. Like I negotiate like crazy. <laughs> Because I know, yeah, you know, you go there, you smile. Part of your DNA, yeah, being Arab, right? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's Arab, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and in that sense, like the more you get out there, the more people trust you. The easier it is to get a better deal. Yeah. Because let's say you can get a ten percent better profit margin just by asking online. It's very hard to get it, but once you work with each other, and we like we know each other. If you ask me something. I, I give people discounts sometimes for sponsorship or whatever, barely. But if I really like someone and I know this guy's coming back a second time or a third time, I can be like, okay, you know what? We can do it. But if people ask me and they, they I'm, I'm not sure if they come back, like, it's like what's in it for me then? Well, it, it all starts with, with likability. And, and it starts also with certainty. Because now I'm certain I'm gonna, he's going to come back a second time or a third time. So then you don't mind giving a piece of the pie or, 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 or giving away a discount because it's coming back. But if someone's not coming back, then why would you give discount? At it's a long game. It's a long game. Yeah. I think in the end, that, that's the reason why, why, why you do what you do. You do it for a long game. And Absolutely. just like you, we've seen people come in and out of the business, stay one year, two years, three years, especially media buyers. They just want to make quick money, but they're not in it for the long, long run. And then they don't build a sustainable business. And I can really recommend as I speak to a lot of people daily for a business club, for the funds, for the foundation, or uh, especially in, in affiliate marketing, I always want to tell people, try to build a sustainable business. It doesn't matter what kind of offers you promote, but being here for short term is never the right answer. People want to make a quick buck, that's fine, but you can make so much more in two to five years time if you treat your business like a business and not like a cash grab or a hit and run, or let's say you're gambling like a casino, or if I can just run this ad. And even with media buying, and I can speak from experience as well, people are always like, oh, if I have this one ad that's working, right? I'll just make bank. But it's not about this one ad. We're just talking about this. It's not about this one million you're making with one hit. It's about creating so many different ads or, or offers or promoting offers and then making a good buck percentage wise on all of them. And that's when you start reinvesting your, your money you're making. And that's when you grow any type of business. I didn't make my first million just by making one million overnight. There, there's some of, but just like you, you didn't make your first million with this one, one ad or one campaign. Correct. It's, it's several months of time. A lot of steps involved. Steps, yeah. You Tons make of steps, yeah. 5K, 10K, 20K, 50K, 100K, and on to on. And that's when you reach, let's say, 1 million revenue. Then we, you, that, that's when you reach 1 million in profits. But I feel this industry, people are, um, yes, you can make money quick. But there's an illusion where people think this is the only way, this is the way out quick. But even the e-com guys, the big humble guys we're talking about, they build a brand or they're pushing several months and maybe they got lucky faster, but they treated it like a business. Right. They didn't treat it like a quick hit and run. Or Let me invest 10K and make 100K. Yeah. There's rarely someone who starts off in any type of business that invests, they will go 10X very fast right. if you don't treat it like a business. 
And I think it comes out to the mentality, right? Because they say how you do one thing is how you do everything. Exactly. So you try to get rich quick, your whole life is going to be like that. Because you get rich quick, you're going to lose money quick too. It's the same fucking idea, right? Constantly awesome. at the end of the day. That, that's why gamblers lose their money. Exactly. Yeah. In life. Yeah. Because they make habits. Yeah, it happens. They make quick money yeah. and they lose quick money. Yeah. Because they're not used to building. Look, ABC has been here for seven years now. People are still coming up for you. Oh, you're still running ABC? I'm like, yeah. I asked you that here yeah. earlier. Yeah, you have a CEO though now. Yeah, we have a CEO. Like, she's yeah. awesome. And, yeah. and I said as well, like, the reason why, why we have, or like ABC has CEO is she does the job better than I do, man. Exactly. She's way more punctual. She's, she, she has a great vision. She understands me, most important. She knows where ABC came from. So also in, in that sense, she understands where I with ABC want to go. And now we created our own vision where we want to go. Because it's not about me anymore. ABC used to be a, me, Aki, ABC, ABC Aki. But now ABC is becoming a brand. It became a brand. And she's running it on and the back end way better than I am. I'm still doing like the sponsorship and the people. And, and that's where I'm good at. I told her, yeah. you're way better than what you do. I'm, I'm way better. And just let me do these things. And I'm up. that's the way to go. But to grow a company, I think you should also trust people. And I think a lot of people are afraid to give away their baby because they're afraid to give away, they're afraid that something might go wrong. And they, they, then you're giving away something you've built. But at the end of the day, I could start a new ABC in any industry or a new ABC in this industry. XYZ tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. We call it XYZ. Yeah. If someone took ABC away or it would go down, you start a different brand because I know how to start this kind of business. Same like you, paper yeah. call. If, if, if this current like unlimited holdings uh, goes down, a collection order, I mean, yeah, okay, for whatever reason, you'll start a new brand, right? And I got my network with me. Exactly. They'll come with me. And like the network, network is what we're you. talking, is yeah. to become a person of value, person of trust. Yeah. So I, in that sense, it's important to trust people to grow your company. Like I said, I'm not afraid of the future because I trust, I'm certain. Yeah. And that's the, that's the reason why I really am very careful to fuck shit up. Everyone fucks up sometimes, right? You'll make a mistake. You'll, you'll, you'll disappoint some people. You'll, you'll disappoint a attendee, a, a sponsor, uh, maybe some clients on you. He's disappointed with the quality. There's always something which is, it, that's life, man. But it's also how you treat the disappointment of people. How you, how, how do you adapt? We're just talking about how do you adapt? Like, or how do you, okay, you're disappointed. How can I fix it? Wow. You, you just said a lot of big shit there. And I hope I would rewind. If you're listening to this, rewind what he, what, what you said and play that again, because I think a lot of people in our industry, they start off as buying media, they start making some money, but they don't know how to, they can't even fathom having a team of five, 10, 20 people on their team, right? And it comes down to certainty. There are certainties that they know how to generate leads, they know how to do whatever, but when you can train someone to do that and you can get yourself out of the business, that's really where you grow, right? Is what it comes down to. So I think hats off to you for making that happen because that's not an easy transition. I've done it myself. Shit is scary as fuck, man. It's scary, man. But <laughs> if you want to go to the next level, one reason I can travel the world while well, my business is running because I got a team that's doing it. I right. got people on my team that I trust that I know they're not going to fuck shit up or if they do fuck it up, hey, we'll fix it at the end of the day. So let, let's talk about that because I'm sure that it's happened to me when you're, you're connecting people, you're running a business, there's some fuck ups that happen. Like, can you talk about, a, you don't have to say it specifically, but what's a fuck up and how, how do you handle that fuck up and <laughs> what's the lesson out of that fuck up? Like a big fuck up, man. <laughs> I trusted my previous investors too much. Well, okay. Then there are people in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, a big fuck up was I, I was really trusting their words too much and their direction. And they eventually also fucked me over big time for more than a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. Not many people know this, but I think the biggest fuck up then was I tried to fix it as fast as possible, short term, no matter what. Like I was just, Actually, what we're trying to, we were saying. It's like a sinking ship. You're trying to fix it while yeah. it's sinking. Man. And then, but you have to sometimes jump into the helicopter, spend the money, just get the fuck fixed. out. Yeah, get the fuck out. And that's when you can fix things better. But also with, with sponsors, things happen. We, I remember we had an event right before COVID came. And I was like, no, man, I'm not traveling to this conference. COVID's coming. We didn't know what was going to happen, right? That was like. Are people dying? You know, people, we heard people dying in China and stuff. And at that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to travel to this event, but we were organizing an event and the sponsor is like, Aki, 
it was organized like shit. The banners were placed wrong and you weren't wow. there. And I said, you're right. I, I went to the office. I apologized. I said, you know what? I told, I told you guys I wasn't going to be there, but I should have actually canceled the event because I was uncertain it was, it was going to be a good event mm. due to COVID spreading. And it had just started to spread in Europe. And then the, re the, the only way to fix it is to go there, be a man and apologize because I could be like, yeah, guys, yeah, sorry, whatever the fuck. If you don't like it, whatever, it could be. Or I can be like, you know, guys, I fucked up. I should have been more honest or I should have taken, called the shot and not organized the event. But I didn't want to disappoint you, but actually now I disappointed you guys more. And I'm sorry, how, how do you want it fixed? Wow. So I can see in that sense, does it fit in my capacity to fix it? Or are you asking too much? But if I propose two ways, maybe I propose way more, and, and they're okay with wait with less, or maybe they're not happy with my proposal, how it's being fixed. So once I ask, how do you like it to be fixed? They're like, Aki, if you can do this for us, we'll be happy. Nice. It's like, consider it done, done, right? And I think once you fuck up, and I fucked up many times, man, in life, like a lot. But I learned one thing, everything is fixable. And time passes with everything. And if it's, if it's not fixable, it's not meant to be fixed. I love that. Right? Like, in that sense, I've lost friendship because someone fucked me over. But I've forgiven these, these people. But I've also had people fucking me over. And that apologize. I'm like, bro, you fucked me over so hard. I can never forgive you. Yeah. I've, I might forgive, but I never forgive. I don't want to see you again. Yeah. It's possible. And, and then it's not meant to be fixed. Or maybe I make a mistake. And maybe I make a mistake in the future. We don't know, man. Think life changes. I think that at the end of the day, you should always try to do your best and not to fuck up, obviously. Yeah. But when you do, you have to stand up and be a man and be like, hey, I'm sorry. Face the music, right? Basic. And that, that's, uh, that's a lot e easier said than done, I think. But that's when you got to buck up and I fucked up here. I'm going to fix it. And I love the fact that you asked the, the people, how, well, how do you want this resolved? And then you did it, right? So that's awesome. It's always better to ask questions yeah. than that people ask you questions. I love that. Because the way we work in any type of business, it, we even have it in our SOPs. I always try to limit the question from the client mm -hmm. because a question from the client means they need something from me. I don't want people to be needing something from me and you're wasting time. So when you limit the questions from a client, you, you win time and you win uh, fast, with like the speed. So that's a simple example. When, when a sponsor sponsor our event, we send them a list of things of, we've had so many questions that now we know. The sponsors usually ask the same things, right? It's always like five questions which people always ask. It's not like a hundred questions, but if you have 10 plus sponsors asking all the same questions, simple example, um, then, then you're wasting 10, 20 minutes each time. So when you have written in your SOPs, all these questions, what you could possibly get from a sponsor and send them in one go, you, you limit the chance of uncertainty from a sponsor working with you. I'll say, hey, bro, this is what we need from you. Send it maximum in three days. This is what you can expect at the event. This, this, and this. By the way, the pictures will come within three to five days after the event. Because these are questions we get. Hey, what are the pictures coming? When, wh wh where's the banner? Like, we are so well prepared now that, love that any, like, if my mother would read the SOP, she could talk to a sponsor. And that's, that's a real SOP. But I think in, when you work with any type of client, you should be the one asking the questions. Yeah. Because if, if someone asks you, they, they will call you and be like, hey, I, I don't know about this. And I don't like to be called with, with questions or something where, I have to shift my energy on something I'm working on and answer, answer simple You're questions. You're going backwards at that point. Exactly. Right? And going forward, yeah. And maybe I'm busy with, with something else or I'm, I'm in my deep work mode and then someone's calling me with a simple question and I'm, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm tuned out. But once you have, it all starts with SOPs. Once you have the, the, the SOPs so well written or even in a, in a, in a team, boy, you could work in my company and you could, you could, you know how to work with a sponsor. Yeah. Same I counts for my mother, for anybody. But this is like how the, the way to grow a business 
fast and easy because then at the end, there's no, there's no uncertainty for anybody. Yeah. We know exactly that the sponsor knows. And we ask, hey, did you read the whole, all the questions? We confirm. Once we've confirmed, we know, hey, if he asks, you can re redirect them back to the, to the documents. I love it. Hey, bro, it's, it's in the document. Yeah. If you want to call, it's possible, but please first read the document first. And then you, at one, that's how you scale and speed. That's, yeah, that's what it is. You got to make good processes in place that are repeatable. Exactly. Other people put it. I love it. So let's, let's shift back to e -com, media buying. You obviously have a different perspective, I think, than most people. You see things from a different kind of view, right? In terms of, I think, from high up as to what's going on. Where, where, do, you see, where do you see the future of, of e-com and lead gen from where, you, from where you sit? Well, I spoke to uh, two great guys yesterday, Monish and, and Daniel. Yeah. Monish is a big e-com guy, uh, builds brands, uh, does a couple million a year, very successful in his space because he's built a community for his e-com brands. Okay. What I liked about him, and we're, I'm also working with Daniel, Daniel... He builds platforms, but very, it could be a very simplified platform to scale things in the back end for your e-com brand or for your lead gen brand. So how I see the future is really, it's, it's automation, like platforms, uh, it's community building, like in any sense, because people will come, come back once they feel connected to the brand, but that's that. I think brand and community is the same, but now I consult or connect also e-com brands with agencies, with, with platform builders or whatever they need, um, also, or affiliate networks, for example, or affiliates, because they're usually good in, in their own country or their own region, but they want to scale either to MENA region, like to Arab countries, or they want to scale to Europe or the US. And, and with obviously the ABC network, it's very easy to tap into, hey, talk to these people. But talking to these brands, I really feel like, again, it's like long-term game. If you want to start a, a legion, company or, or you want to work in Legion or you want to start an e-com brand or e-com company, it's all how do I provide the best possible value to the people that I'm selling to or that I want to become on board? Because once people feel scammed, let's say in Legion, or they're coming into a whole quiz and funnel being bombarded in a negative way, they, you lose these clients, you lose these type Absolutely. of people. Same counts for e-com. If, if you can sell a shit Alibaba or AliExpress product, you'll make a quick buck, but that's, that's about it. But once you're still building a brand, providing, building a community that they're part of and making it super easy, possible for them, let's say automated for your own, for yourself, I think that's, then you build a, a sellable business mm -hmm. and, and building a sellable business is not making quick buck because no one will buy a drop shipping brand. Well, but maybe they do, but if it's a shit drop shipping brand, People won't really buy it because it's not sellable, because it's like a hype. Unless you really have the process, the community, which you dropped your brand, you've automated all the process, then, then you or me could be like, oh, that's an interesting business. They're doing so much revenue. Okay, then you two exit, five exit, whatever. But that's all part of the back end. And I think that goes back to certainty. By having those automations in place, right? By having predict, it creates predictable revenue flows, which makes your company more appetizing for someone to buy it out because they know that they can buy it here. They have these automations, they can take it to there. It all comes at the end of the day. So that's something I didn't expect to talk about, but we, we talked about certainty a lot, right? So, and that's what life comes down to. It's like, right. hey, you're gonna put X amount of money in this. What's the certainty that it's gonna bring X amount of value, right? At the end of the day. So yeah. that, that was great. A lot of fucking value here, man. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I can talk out for ages, but that, <laughs> it just happened to come like this. But I think that the certainty, oh, I, I really wanna give or tell people, when you start giving, that's certain. Absolutely. Because when you start giving, people are start, starting to talk about you. Like, I know I'm a person of value. People know me, but why, how do they know me? It's because I gave with free events, with right connections. Even now we have paid events, but we give the right connections. And we give so much back to the people in the community that it all starts with giving, man. And also when you're a taker, you sleep less better, less good. But when you're a giver, you sleep well. Right, yeah. But when you start giving, that's certain because you can always give. And unlimited, like you can give energy, time, connections, it's, whatever you can give is endless, but you cannot expect something to come to you if you haven't given. Absolutely. But even now I don't expect, and I've given a lot, like donated, built, whatever, uh, connections. And 
even now I don't expect, but I know it comes back so much faster because people now want to help. They see a foundation, they see a fund, they see a community events company, like, oh man, he's giving so much to the community. How can I give something back? And now people come to you, okay, you have to meet this person. I, I know this guy or this girl, you guys have to meet. And this will happen when, when you've given to people. But if you're not a person of value and you're only a taker, no one will be like, hey, David. They, they won't even think about you. Absolutely. Or they'll, they'll think in a negative way, be like, uh, leave him. He's a taker. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a taker. <laughs> Fuck, he's a leecher. Never mind. Absolutely. And this is, it all comes back to certainty. Yep. If you're certain of yourself, if you're self confident, if you love what you do, most important, bro, I don't feel I'm working any day of my life, man. I love that. I travel, I, I meet the brightest minds in the world. I see so many beautiful human beings and they all want to help because they know I'm a giver. And I don't give because I want people to think I'm a giver. You have to give from your heart. And that, that's the reason why I started the foundation. Even People in Egypt in the street, the kids in the street, we, we adopted a street dog. Everyone's treating the, the street dogs with care because I told them, like, guys, street dog, you just gave birth to seven puppies. Simple example. I want this to be the cleanest streets in, in Cairo. People come, the kids come clean the street now. I love it. And you change their mindset. Like, hey, guys, it all starts. They're giving. You got it in the mindset of giving. Exactly. Back to the community. Giving back. Yeah. Taking care of people taking care of the streets. It starts with taking care of trash. Yeah. Take care of the streets, take care of your parents, your friends, your family. It goes, it's endless. But again, it all starts with giving. So let, let's talk, and that's a great way to, to wrap this up because obviously we're here in, the, in our, in, in the, uh, we're at Philly World, we're in Dubai, right? Everyone comes to learn what are tricks so they can make more money, help their businesses grow. But when you grow a business, it's absolutely, it's important to give back, right? To give back to the community, give back to the environment. And so forth. So one thing I learned today, I didn't know that you you have a foundation where you're cleaning Correct. up the Nile River. Correct. Right. I didn't know that there was so much pollution going. On. I had no clue until you told me. And that's the thing about awareness, becoming more aware of it. Yeah. I want to give to that. Right. This I thing is it's great. I mean, people depend on the river for a lot of things, right? So let, let's talk about that and where, where did the ideas come from? Why are you so passionate about it? And how can we provide value to that? How can we give to that? Thanks for asking. I yeah. wasn't expecting it so, so but uh, look, I think like the the I've always had a connection with Egypt. My like I'm Arab. My parents are Egyptian, born and raised in, in Egypt. I'm born and raised in, in Holland. I think for people like, like me especially, like growing up with two different cultures at home, like Arab culture at home, but being raised in a Dutch society, you, I always felt the connection thanks to my mom. She put in so much effort in, in teaching me Arabic, teaching me the Quran, teaching me the Arab values, uh, staying true to yourself as an Arab. She always used to be like, you're going to be discriminated because you're Muslim, you're Arab. Mm. It, it, that's just how the way it's going to be. Yeah. So don't get mad because if you get mad, they will look bad at you. But these are like things you learn at a young age. Um, and then she always, like my dad always took me around in Cairo as a young kid on the shoulders and walking around like he's the nicest guy ever, always laughing and, and always trying to show me around when I was a kid, you know? And I think when you're a kid and you're growing up in two countries, basically, I saw Holland always being clean and I saw Egypt always being dirty. And I was always wondering, oh, it's, why is it dirty as, as a kid? And then now the, the story actually goes that I, um, my, my father and me were walking past the Nile River and he is, he grew up there, so he used to swim as a kid in the Nile River. Wow. And now it's impossible. And he showed me where he used to swim as a kid. And it was just full of trash. And I couldn't imagine him swimming there. Yeah. And then I realized, man, something needs to be done. Because he was so disappointed. And I realized that's real disappointment. Because it hurts. I saw him go back to his childhood memory yeah. and, and think like, what the fuck has happened? And my mom always used to say, oh, Egypt used to be so clean. Cairo used to be so clean back in the days when I was a kid, walking to high school or walking to primary school or university. I used to walk, we wouldn't find a paper on the street. And I look now, bro, everywhere you look, there's papers on the street. Wow. So the foundation really came of also giving, providing. 
I, I saw an opportunity. I think the recycling business is also, it's, it's, it's an interesting industry to be in, but it all starts with giving back to the community because I know the water level is going down because of the Ethiopian dam. Um, people in general, they treat trash in a very bad way in Egypt. They just throw it out on the streets. Mm. I'm, I'm heavily, heavily sure that I can change the mindset of the people in Egypt. That's awesome. Because it, take, it took two generations to make Egypt dirty. I think we can have, we can fix it within one generation. That's beautiful. Because it, it, it's, it's all about priorities. The Nile River is just a start because now we're taking the trash out. But I want to fix local communities. Um, they right, built football fields, uh, school, mosques. Uh, homes, we, you know, build homes for homeless people. Because now I came across that that's also a big issue. And actually, bro, for us, it's not much money. Like, you can build a home for a couple grand. Wow. Which will, it's generational change, man. Uh, a football field will cost less than a grand. You can have a local community, kids play in a soccer field or football field, which will be there for 10 years. If it's, like, at least if they treat it well, uh, yeah. well and stuff. But I think now the, the now cleanup is it opening many doors. We, my goal is really to fix it in all 11 countries, um, organize a conference actually coming from their events background, and now cleanup conference where we get all 11 countries on board having the same direction or vision. Because you cannot be like, I'm, I'm building a dam and fuck Egypt, like yeah. Ethiopia. You cannot pollute it. You, you can't have a factory polluted in Uganda or Sudan because this will also influence Egypt. Um, and without the river now, there wouldn't be no pyramids, man. There would oh. be the, the, the Egyptian pride is the Nile. And besides, the, the, the Nile is owned by all the Egyptians. It's not even owned by the government. Wow. I didn't know that. The people own the Nile River. So they should benefit from the Nile River. But the government isn't doing anything because they've, they've got bigger fish to fry. The economy is going down. The, the, the Egyptian pound is dropping like crazy. Um, everything's getting more expensive. I know, but someone needs to do, and I'm like, okay, with my network, with, with my vision, with the people that I know, I know I can move things fast, get funding, get donations, get the right people on board. So the goal is, this, this is something we're talking about. I, I don't feel like I'm working a day in my life. And this is something I could see I, I can do for the rest of my life. Yeah, I love that. But I hope to only have a foundation for 10 years and that it's not needed anymore. Yeah. So my goal is I could do it for the rest of my life. But I hope we build a foundation and we change the people's mindset that my foundation isn't even needed in the future. Because that's when you've created generational change. Because when people treat trash better and don't pollute the now with chemicals, then actually we're coming up, becoming obsolete. But now we're needed. And we're definitely needed to change the communities. I love it. I, I think that's great because that's a, that's a longer term vision. Helping the community. And then at the end, of it, it's a habit, right? It changes everything. If you treat trash better, I mean, it's going to lead to open doors for other opportunities. So I love it. And I think that this is beautiful. You got in this business, obviously, you, you've grown, you're scaling the business right now. You're building this amazing community. You're doing this internationally. So I freaking love it. I, this, I think this is, like, this is one of the best interviews we've done because you just help us see shit from a whole different level, right? And the great thing with the world's told us building behind us. So it's that's sick, the yeah, kind yeah. of concept we're thinking about. Yeah, think yeah. outside the box, think differently, man. So how can people find you, man? Follow me on Instagram, I think best. I'll send you the, the, the Instagram, Hamam. Like, I'll send you the link. Um, we'll work on the website, my personal brand website. I want to get more out there, get the story more out there, especially for the foundation. Uh, the foundation is called the NioCleanup.org. The NioCleanup.org. Yeah, the okay. org. We're changing the website as we speak. Affiliate Business Club, obviously, affiliatebusinessclub.com. We're launching a conference and a platform this year. Uh, Send you all the details. That's the most important thing. Actually. Everyone, check out Affiliate Business Club. I've been to many events. I'll be, I'm going to a few here. Great community. You want to grow. Your network is your net worth at the end of the day. Aki's a great guy to know. Obviously, helps collapse time frames. And that's how you go from A to Z as quickly as possible, right? With that, with, and avoiding all those land landmines that are out there. Exactly. Great. I love it. Aki, great having you on the show, man. Let's, Let's fucking go. go, baby. Damn. <laughs> Love it, man. This is awesome. Bro, thank you, bro. Good shit.